So, my name is Evgenia and I'm a volcanologist based at the University of Leeds. I am presenting the catalogue of Icelandic volcanoes because I've been managing this project for four years when I was at the Icelandic Met Office. The catalogue is a huge collaboration. The steering committee is made of people from the Icelandic Met Office, the University of Iceland and the Icelandic Civil Protection. But the material in the catalogue has also come not just from the institute listed above, but the Iceland Geo Survey, Icelandic Institute of Natural History, and many other institutes and individuals. But I'm going to start at the beginning. The catalogue was conceived in the aftermath of the Eyjafjallajökull 2010 eruption. The initial idea and funding came from the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO. And it was later supported by the Icelandic government and also incorporated into FutureWalk. The idea behind the catalogue was to create an official publication to serve as an accurate and up-to-date source of information about active volcanoes in Iceland. Why do we need this? Well, contrary to the wrongly publicised image of Iceland sometimes, not all eruptions are like the one in 2010. If there were, our life would actually be a lot easier, but it's not. Instead, we have 32 volcanic systems, and each of them is an individual. They vary hugely, for example, in how they're built up. Some of them have more than one volcano. Some of them also have a fissure swarm. And eruptions on all of these parts of the volcanic system vary hugely. They vary in terms of their frequency, where they occur, what they produce. Is it ash? Is it lava? Is it something else? They vary hugely, of course, in their duration, and um, the reason I selected the last 20 years is not random, but that's how long I've been living in Iceland. So the people of my generation will have witnessed an eruption every two or three years, which is a high eruption frequency. The last eruption occurred in the Bárðarbunga volcanic system on the Fisher Swarm, and it was a lot larger than the explosive eruptions we have remembered from the last few years. But also we have had much larger events in the recent path, past uh, I've just given one example there, the Laki eruption in the 18th century. And yes, I did mean to say the recent past, because we are talking about geological timescales. And events like this occur regularly on those timescales. But the eruptions also vary in terms of the hazards they pose. So the last eruption did not produce any ash to speak of, but it produced a lot of gas. And it started creating a problem that was not really remembered by the people who live here and now. It produced so much gas that was causing repeated air pollution events in populated areas hundreds of kilometers away from the eruption site. So the catalogue sets out to summarize the known history of activity, eruption frequency, magnitude, and the characteristics of the volcanic products. Creating a catalogue of Icelandic volcanoes is nothing new to the Icelandic nation. Here's a picture of a book which I acquired just this week. It's a catalogue written in 1880 by a farmer, just five years after a huge eruption in Askja. And he describes in a lot of detail all the volcanic systems he's aware of and all the eruptions and Jökullhlaups which they have produced. So since then, of course, many other catalogues have been published and many of them in modern times and they're very, very good. So how are we going to improve on that? We're going to we had this milestone in mind that we were going to make this information even more readily accessible and easy to use. So we made a website of this catalogue. So without further ado, I'm going to take you straight to the website and demonstrate it live. So this is the catalogue of Icelandic volcanoes. You see 32 green dots on the map. These are our 32 volcanic systems. And the green colour is their current aviation colour code. It is linked directly to the Icelandic Met Office, who are responsible for changing it. So if it changes there, it also changes here. If you know which volcanic system you're interested in, you just go ahead and, and click on it. Or you can click on it from this list on the left-hand side. But the list on the left-hand side is also designed to help you search for volcanic system if you're not really sure which one is the most appropriate one. For example, you might be interested in knowing which are the most active volcanic systems in Iceland. So you can sort them by their activity level, and then you will see that there are four volcanic systems in Iceland which have been labelled as high active, Bárðabunga, Grímsvöð, Hekla and Katla. Or you might want to know which ones have 
erupted the most recently, so you, um, you arrange them by the last eruption. So once you know which volcanic system you're interested in, you click on it, and here you see three blue arrows, which are your gateways into the catalogue. The bottom one here is called activity status. This is a live web tool, which is linked to the database of, volcano, oh, sorry, of volcanic earthquakes at the IMO. It reads the database and the red bar shows you how many earthquakes have occurred in this volcanic system in the last year, the last month, the last week, or the last day. The blue bar, which you just about can see here, is the value or number of earthquakes which is considered average for this particular volcanic system. As you can see here, the red bar absolutely dwarfs the blue bar. This is because we had this large and very complicated event in the volcanic system in the last year. But just for comparison, let me just make more space on the screen. Let's go to a neighboring volcano, Grimshwe, which is also a highly active volcanic system, but it has not erupted as recently. There we go. So you can see here the red bar and the blue bar are not that different. So the activity of the last year is very similar. So this tool should allow end users to interpret more easily what the number of earthquakes means in each volcanic system. Is it just average or is there a reason to think that something new is happening? Now Photos is a library of photographs that's been selected to show what the volcanic system looks like any pictures of recent eruptions if they're available, and any other things that are characteristic for this volcanic system. And then we get to the catalogue information, which is really the heart of the catalogue. It is designed in several layers to allow you to gather more and more detailed information according to what you require. If you're pressed for time and you just want a quick overview of what the volcanic system is, what it can produce, what kind of hazards you might expect, the short description chapter at the beginning is designed to do exactly that. It is followed by slightly more detailed tables, separate for central volcanoes and fissure swarms. That again gives you a very quick overview of the key facts, where the volcanic system is located, what type of volcano it is in terms of, for example, for Barra da Bunca it is a subglacial caldera, when it has erupted most recently, and uh, many other eruption source parameters. Carrying on, we get to the detailed description. This is the innermost layer of the catalogue. And it's subdivided into several aspects of the volcanic system. Again, to help you access the information you need to find it easily. I'm just going to give you a taster session. And I'm going to go here into the eruption history and pattern of Bauru da Bunga. Oh, sorry, um, it's Grimshaw. It doesn't matter. Um, so this text is also... Um, illustrated with a lot of graphs, figures, and maps to help you understand it better. So here is a figure showing what kind of eruptions we can expect from Grimshwe. And you can see here, explosive basaltic eruptions by far the most dominant type. Now, if we continue further on, we get to map layers. And all of these map layers are highly interactive. That means you can click on them, and you can obtain more information about all the details in there. Let me show you about the Munga. There's a reason for that. Map layers. So you can see here, you can select different layers. Let me select Bar the Bunga Central Volcano. So you see, aha, there are two central volcanoes of Bar the Bunga. I wonder what they're called. So you can click on them and ask. This is the biggest central volcano, and it's called Barra Bunga, same as the volcanic system. But the smaller one is called Hamarin. You can also get an idea of what else there is to find. You see there is a caldera that is in the biggest central volcano. You can see how far the fissure swarm extends. So Barra Bunga has a really large one that goes from northeast really far to the southwest of Iceland. And you can see where lavas have been produced on the fissure swarm. In terms of Barra Bunga, they go all the way to the south coast. What you can do here is you can click on individual map layers and you can obtain information about them. So this is the youngest lava flow in Iceland, Hallerhone, and its name has not even been confirmed yet. And you can obtain all the information like which year it was erupted, if it's known, and something about the mapping accuracy as well. 
And I'd like to point out that we're using the best available maps that are, exist, and some of this information has not even been published elsewhere. So another very important part of the catalogue is our work on eruption scenarios. I'm going to demonstrate to you Kahla volcano has a very well-known eruption history. And uh, the eruption scenarios are structured the same for each volcanic system. They are divided into small, moderate and large eruptions based on how much volume of magma and tephra and lava they produce. And there again, they're illustrated with a number of figures. They're built up in the same way in the sense that we, uh, they begin with um, describing what the precursor signals are likely to be, what the warning period is like, of course only when it's known. And then what happens once the eruption begins? What does it produce? How much output can we expect? And how long is it likely to last? And what are the principal hazards? For example, for Kahtla, we can see that small eruption scenarios are the dominant ones. Large eruptions are actually very rare. And also you can get, um, yes, you can get information such as photographs of the last eruption that uh, falls under this eruption scenario. This is the last moderately sized eruption in Kahtla, which occurred in 1918. And you can also get maps of where the ash fell during this eruption with isopack maps. And all of these isopack maps are also available in interactive version under the map layers. I'm going to select, so for Kahtla we have quite a lot of isopack maps. I'm going to show you one from a large eruption in 1755. And the triangles here, so the icepack lines show you where the tephra went, and the triangles here show you locations where tephra has been collected and analysed. And we can click on it and we can see information such as what was the size of the ash collected at that particular location. You can see it in graphical form. And you can also download all the raw data behind it. Now you can also um, learn more about individual volcanic eruptions by searching for them in this called eruption search. This is the database search, and we have included the four most active volcanic systems: Hekla, and Kahtla. The reason for this is that in this version of the catalogue, we're not going for quantity of data; we're going for quality. These four volcanic systems account for over 80% of eruptions, and their eruption history is better known for all others. So you can uh, narrow your search according to many parameters available here. And I'm just going to select Kahtla, and I want to know how many large eruption scenarios have occurred in Kahtla. So I get up four in historical times. And this is just a summary table, so you can also click on individual eruptions and get all the available information about them. And of course, all of this is downloadable. I'm going to have to stop here, even though I could continue all day to demonstrate this to you. And I just want to say, please do go in and experiment and try it out, and let us know if you find anything that you think is either can be improved or any other ways of making it more useful to the end users. But it's been an absolute pleasure to work on this project with many of the leading specialists in Iceland. And I'm very honoured to be here and present it to you today. Okay.